viernes, yo soy Rory, hoy es viernes y estoy muy contento de estar aquí contigo hoy. So today's Friday, I wasn't live with you last weekend because my wife and I got out of town. We celebrated 19 years together. Uh, we were so young when we got married. But anyway, uh, we had a good weekend, went to New Mexico, some interesting hot springs in New Mexico called Ojo Caliente. And then on Sunday on our way back, we, uh, we got caught in a, in a kind of a fun, our first uh, storm of the season here in Colorado. So anyway, today we're continuing our chief complaint series in learning medical Spanish in this Facebook group. And so I'm glad to share with you Dolor de Pecho Hoy. So today we're going to talk about some uh, anatomy related to chest pain. We'll talk about some basic symptoms. We'll talk about a handful of common causes and some procedures, tests, to help make those diagnoses and things like that, okay? At a couple different points during our lesson today, I'm gonna to refer you to some other lessons for more detail as it refers to specifics about pain and specifics about the history of the problem. So my best suggestion for you would be to download the notes associated with this lesson so that you've got the links and you can just follow those links off to the uh, other lessons where you can do some uh, further study on other topics, ¿ok? Muy bien, so hoy dolor de pecho en español. Vamos a empezar con anatomía. Anatomía básica, as it refers to dolor de pecho, obviously we've got el pecho, chest. Los pechos and los senos, this is something that comes up when in other contexts, but because it's the same word, but plural, I thought I'd bring it up. So el pecho, singular, chest. Los pechos, los senos are the best words for breasts. So if you're speaking about, in fact, the uh, expression to breastfeed is to dar pecho. And so you talk about los pechos, los senos in other contexts. When it's plural, it's breasts. Okay? Bien. Las costillas, ribs, las costillas. That one's not too hard to remember. You just think of the intercostal space and you're good to go. Las costillas. La clavicula, clavicle, ¿sí? Uh, el estómago, stomach. El hígado, liver. <clears throat> La vesícula biliar, gallbladder. You know, some of this is maybe sort of loosely related to chest pain, uh, but some things that could be um, felt as chest pain, posiblemente. Los pulmones, lungs. Los bronquios. So your, your bron bron uh, bronchial tubes, I don't even know what the word is in English, I'm sorry. Um, los bronchios. El esternón, sternum, ¿sí? Y la tráquea, your trachea, ¿bien? Okay, perfecto. So, aquí tenemos anatomía básica. We start talking about dolor de pecho. Obviously, we're going to get specific about pain. And so, we've got some great resources online talking about pain, talking about both la intensidad y el tipo de dolor, and for that I refer you back to this lesson on pain, okay? So head over to our lesson on pain to get that full workup. We're not going to do a full workup on pain today, okay? But what we are going to do is look at signos y síntomas básicos de dolor de pecho. So dolor de pecho, ansiedad, ansiedad, anxiety. Ardor, ardor is a burning sensation. You might be familiar with ardiente or quemante. Those are good words also that mean burning, but they're adjectives. And so you would talk about ardor on its own, like a burning pain or a burning sensation. But if you use quemante or ardiente, now you need to say dolor quemante, dolor ardiente, okay? Um, there's more information on that in the pain lesson that we just saw in the previous slide. So ardor, burning sensation. Crepitación, crepitación, sonidos o respiraciones crepitantes. And so crackling sounds in breathing, okay? Crepitos. Uh, crepitus is a word in English, ¿verdad? Okay. Debilidad, weakness. Dificultad para respirar, difficulty breathing. And you could use dificultad para and put any verb there uh, to to explain difficulty doing this or that. In other contexts, you might want to say orinar, urinating. 
Uh, we've got respirar here. Maybe it's caminar, walking, dormir, sleeping. So you can just put any verb in the infinitive here, dificultad para, and, and be able to talk about difficulty doing that verb. <clears throat> Dolor agudo, sharp pain. We are going to talk a little bit about some pain, so here we go. Dolor agudo, dolor ardiente. This is the example that uh, where we have ardor, just a burning sensation, but now dolor ardiente or dolor quemante would be another way to talk about similar things. Dolor con movimientos específicos, any pain with specific movements, ¿verdad? Dolor con, with, or sin presión, so dolor with or without pressure. <clears throat> dolor después de comer, so pain after eating. Dolor que corre al lado izquierdo. So corre, you might recognize this verb as the verb to run. And that's one of the best verbs to use in Spanish when we talk about shooting or radiating pain. And so dolor que corre al lado izquierdo, so pain that runs or shoots on the left side, el cuello maybe, el brazo, okay? Edema, edema or hinchazón, swelling, ¿verdad? <clears throat> Continuamos with más síntomas. We've got quite a few today. Falta de aire, so shortness of breath. Fiebre, fever. Jadeos, jadeos. Jadeos is gasping, so like gasping for air. ¿verdad? We'll see wheezing here in a minute. Mareos, dizziness. Miedo, fear. Nausea, nausea. Palpitaciones, so palpitations. Piel húmeda, so like moist or wet, clammy skin. Piel húmeda. Presión alta, presión baja, so high or low blood pressure. You don't need to say anything about blood here. You just use presión. Presión alta, high blood pressure. Presión baja, low blood pressure. Presión en el pecho, so pressure in your chest or Pecho apretado, like a tightness, tight chest, ¿verdad? Sudores, sweating, similar to piel húmeda, right? So sudores, sweating. Silbidos, silbidos, sibilancia o resuello. I hate to give you so many synonyms, but all of these could be wheezing. Uh, it just kind of depends on um, who your patient is, where they're from, and how people in their circle have spoken about wheezing in the past. So silbidos, sil sibilancia, these both actually have some connection to the word whistle in Spanish. Um, but resuello is, uh, is also a good word for wheezing sounds, okay? <clears throat> tos fuerte or tos con flema. So tos fuerte, a strong or hard cough, or tos con flema, uh, tos with, with uh, phlegm. Tos con sangre, bloody cough, vomito con sangre, okay? Bien, so handful of síntomas y signos básicos that could be related to dolor de pecho. Bien, causas comunes, and for these we'll talk about, I think we have about nine causas comunes aquí de dolor de pecho, and for each one we'll give just a little brief description, okay? Causas comunes, asma, asma es una causa, Asma es una inflamación y restricción de las vías respiratorias. Resulta en falta de aire, sibilancia, dificultad para respirar, ansiedad. Es fácil de controlar con un inhalador, un inhalador. Okay? It's easy to control. So, asma is an inflammation and restriction of the vías respiratorias, airways. Resulta en falta de aire, shortness of breath, Sibilancia, wheezing, difficulty breathing, ansiedad, anxiety. It's easy to control with un inhalador, with an inhaler. Bien, moving on to ataque de corazón o infarto de corazón. Okay? Cuando hay una restricción o un bloqueo de flujo de sangre a los músculos del corazón y no recibe suficiente sangre oxigenada, so when there's a restriction or a blockage in the blood flow to the heart's muscles and it doesn't receive enough oxygenated blood. Es una emergencia. It's an emergency. Los síntomas incluyen, symptoms include nausea, nausea, vomito, vomit, falta de aire, shortness of breath, debilidad, 
weakness, presión en el pecho, uh, pressure in your chest, ¿verdad? Sudores, sweating, dolor que corre al lado izquierdo, and pain that shoots to the left side. Okay? Bien. Ataque de pánico. Ataque de pánico. Es un miedo intenso y repentino en que se siente que está sufriendo un ataque al corazón, que se vuelve loco y o que va a morir. So, it's an intense and sudden fear um, that you are suffering a heart attack, that you may be going crazy, or that you're going to die. Now, I'm not mean by saying maybe going crazy. Medline Plus said that. <laughs> so I just had to refer to it. Bien. Uno siente palpitaciones. You feel palpitations, shortness of breath, anxiety, temblores. So um, tr sh shaking, shakiness. Okay? Mareo, dizziness, y respiraciones rápidas and, and fast um, breathing. Bien. Más causas comunes. Número cuatro, acidía. Other words are reflujo, reflux, acidos, acid, or agruras. All these are heartburn, okay? All these words are heartburn in español. Cuando ácidos estomacales, when stomach acids, suben del estómago hacia arriba en la garganta. Resulta en ardor, dolor, cólicos, y se siente hinchado, okay? So... When these stomach acids uh, go up from the stomach to the throat, resulting in burning, pain, some stomach cramping, and you feel bloated. Se siente hinchado. Bien. If you were part of our dolor abdominal lesson a few weeks ago, you saw this one in there also. Bronquitis. Moving on. The bronchitis. Es una infección en las vías respiratorias. It's an infection in the vias respiratorias, airways, okay? Good one for you to know. Um, at the moment, I'm not remembering if that was in our anatomy list or not, uh, but vias respiratorias, airways. Se inflaman y restringen el flujo de aire. So they inflame and they restrict airflow. Puede ser causado por virus o bacteria. It could be caused by a virus or bacteria. Resulta en dificultad para respirar. It results in difficulty breathing. Tos con flema, productive cough, cough, jadeo, gasping for air, y presión en el pecho, ¿sí? And pressure in your chest. Tenemos un coágulo en el pulmón, o embolía en el pulmón, okay? Coágulo is any kind of clot, embolía, embolism, ¿verdad? <clears throat> Cuando un coágulo en la sangre se le sube al pulmón, y obstruye el flujo de sangre o bloquea una arteria que alimenta al pulmón. So this is when a blood clot uh, goes up to the lung and obstructs the blood flow and or blocks an artery that is... Alimenta is a good word for feed. Blocks an artery that's feeding the lungs, okay? Resulta en dificultad para respirar. It results in difficulty breathing. Falta de aire, shortness of breath. Mareos, dizziness, y ritmo cardíaco irregular. So, ritmo cardíaco, cardiac rhythm. If you want to talk about pulse or heart rate, you would use a different word. Probably not ritmo, you would use frecuencia. So, we'd use frecuencia, frequency, frecuencia cardíaca, frecuencia respiratoria. Okay, so frequency, heart, fre um, yeah, heart rate or respiration rate, respiratory rate. Okay. Causas comunes, más causas comunes. Fractura de costilla, costilla, rib, so a rib fracture, broken rib. Las costillas son huesos delgados, the ribs are thin uh, bones. Después de un trauma al pecho o al costado, posible fracturar una costilla. After a trauma, after a chest trauma or trauma to your side, it's possible to fracture a costilla. Resulta en dolor de pecho, results in chest pain. Do Dolor al respirar, uh, pain with breathing, y dolor al palpar el área afectada, and, and pain when you touch the affected area. ¿Sí? Neumotórax. Neumotórax. Es cuando hay un agujero o perforación u otro tipo de lesión al pulmón que resulta en un colapso pulmonar. 
So this is when there is a hole or a perforation or any other type of uh, wound, injury to the lung that results in a, in a lung collapsing. Resulta en dolor de pecho, it, it results in chest pain, dificultad para respirar, um, etc. Bien. Neumonía y pulmonía. So, uh, um, pneumonia. <laughs> Sometimes English is más difícil para mí. Neumonía es una infección en los pulmones causada por bacteria, virus o hongos. So it's an infection in your lungs caused by bacteria, virus, or hongos, any kind of fungus, ¿verdad? <clears throat> Resulta en fiebre alta, results in a high fever, escalofríos, so chills, tos con flema, y dolor al respirar, so proactive cough and uh, pain with breathing. Bien, so those are our causas comunes that I wanted to review with you. We've got some information about historia del problema, but at the end of this, I'm also going to send you off to our most recent Old Carts lesson online where you can read more about uh, getting specific about the onset, location, duration, aggravating, relieving factors, etc., and severity of a particular problem. So that's a good lesson. Lots of great vocabulary and content there for you. But for now, here are some basics, okay? ¿Cuándo empezó el dolor? ¿Cuándo está peor? ¿Cuándo está mejor? So when did it start? When is it worse? When is it better? Some basic preguntas. ¿Cómo empezó? How did it start? De repente, which means suddenly, or poco a poco, o poco a poco. So, ¿cuán, ¿cómo empezó? De repente, o poco a poco? How did it start? ¿Qué hacía cuando empezó? What were you doing when it started? Okay, this is a great question. It's tricky on a grammar level because you're managing two different difficult verb tenses, the imperfect and the preterite verb tenses in Spanish. But I got more news for you along those lines at the end of our uh, time this morning. ¿Ha tenido ese dolor antes? Have you had this pain before? ¿Le duele cuando? Do you have pain when? ¿Camina? When you walk. ¿Hace ejercicio? When you do exercise. ¿Se esfuerza? When you strain. Maybe not everyone does exercise, but they might strain or when they walk, ¿verdad? <clears throat> ¿Le duele cuando se acuesta? When you lie down. ¿Cuando descansa? When you're resting. Cuando respira, when you're breathing, okay? Bien, well, like I was saying, uh, we've got a full lesson on old carts and history of the problem. So I refer you here to this link to go uh, read up more about those um, preguntas and that vocabulario, okay? Muy bien. Some exámenes y procedimientos para diagnosticar un problema de dolor de pecho. Para diagnosticar, análisis de sangre y laboratorios. So, some blood tests and labs. Electrocardiograma. So, ECG. I'm not sure how quickly people relate ECG to electrocardiograma. People are pretty quick, maybe, in English to relate an EKG to a heart test. But you probably just need to practice your pronunciation and say the whole thing. Electrocardiograma. Okay, electrocardiograma. Endoscopía. Es un tubo con un cámara para ver la garganta y el, est y el estómago. It's a tube with a camera to see uh, the stomach and the throat. ¿Verdad? Examen físico. Obviously, signos vitales, vital signs. Examen de estrés, possibly. So, a stress test. Nitroglycerina para ver si se alivia. So nitroglycerin to see if any of the symptoms are, are relieved or alleviated. ¿verdad? <clears throat> Rayos X or radiografía del pecho. Rayos X is specifically x-ray. Radiografía could be, um, it's sort of a larger category of imaging, right? So when you talk about the department, it's radiografía, el radiólogo. Uh, and so radiografía del pecho could include some other tests as well but rayos X is specifically x-ray. Tomografía computada, TAC, also known as a TAC, tomografía axial computada, um, but tomografía computada, TAC, CT scan, 
Ultrasonido, ultrasound, es una sonografía para ver los órganos, los vasos sanguíneos y otros tejidos. Okay, so it's, an, it's a sonogram to, ver, to see organs, blood vessels, vasos sanguíneos. So when it comes to blood vessels, we've got vasos sanguíneos, arterias, and then venas. Arteriol, ar, ar, arterioles, also um, the smaller arterias, ¿verdad? But, Um, en general, vasos sanguíneos, arterias y venas. Bien. Ok, excelente. That's it for today's lesson. I've got two updates for you. Dos noticias. First of all, inmersión. I don't spend a lot of time talking about our immersion programs on this video viernes because this isn't really a big celly type uh, space for us. But this is probably... The best way, definitely, not probably, the best way for you to gain comfort, confidence, and um, fluidity in your expression in Spanish and your ability to comprehend native speakers would be to be a part of some sort of immersion program. And I personally lead these medical ones two times a year, February and July, and I would love to work with you. Uh, so if you're thinking that you might want to do some Spanish travel at some point, um, take a look at these medical Spanish immersion programs just on the website, find the immersion tab, and from there you'll find the medical Spanish immersion programs, okay? Um, and finalmente, medical Spanish verbs in past tenses. I'm about three quarters of the way done with an online, it's an eight lesson course on the past tenses. And one of the things that's difficult for Spanish students regardless of your profession, regardless of your application for Spanish, is managing the different past tenses. So there's two major players in the past tense, the imperfect and the preterite. I was talking about them a few slides back when we were looking at the history of the problem. Uh, what were you doing when the pain started? So those are two different past tenses. Anyway, I'm about three quarters of the way done with an eight lesson course, and I'm looking for some beta testers. And so if you would like to be a part of a small team, I only want like five people to beta test it. Um, so if you want to be a part of that small team of folks that are going to beta test the course for me, please send me an email. I'd love to give you access to it. It's not something though that you just kind of lollygag through. I'm going to open the course, give you free access to it, and ask you to complete the course like within a week's time. And so it, it, it'll take some energy on your part. Um, and I'm looking for legit feedback too. So Rory, this was great, but this was kind of subpar. <laughs> you need to work on that. Um, so we recently released the present tense online verbs course. If you feel like you need to work on your present tenses, you can find that course, which has already been tested and modified and ready to go. It's released. Um, but uh, within, you know, hopefully by the end of this month, I'd like to make our past tense course live. But in order to do that, I need some beta testers. So uh, please send me an email if you'd like to be a part of that beta testing team. Muy bien. Gracias por aprender español conmigo. Thanks for learning Spanish with me. Juntos mejoramos comunidades. That's our goal, right? Improving, impacting communities through language. Muy bien. Para más español, head to commongroundinternational.com. Feliz Viernes. Hasta luego. Thank you for joining me today on this video Viernes lesson. I wanted to invite you to join our community. If you're not a member of the Facebook group already, that I deliver these live lessons in on most every Friday, and also point you to the website where you can find a bunch more information about medical Spanish, whether that be courses or free materials for you or finding a private tutor to work with you online or face to face. And also let you know about some amazing Spanish immersion programs, either you as a medical person or your significant other as working in some other industry or your family. If you want to improve your Spanish and you have time and budget to go do some travel, our programs are pretty amazing. I think it'd be fun to work with you. And finally, if you have some document work at your clinic or at your hospital or within your setting that needs to be professionally translated, shoot me a message. Upload your document to us and we can get you a quick quote and help you out with your uh, Spanish language documents as well. Have a great day.